Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Map Making with Sparks. My name is Sparks, and we're back on the Trutinor server, uh, working on our adventure map once again. I've uh, been doing quite a bit of off-camera work, been doing a lot of research, as it were, uh, and I just want to I want to talk about two things I'm changing, and then we're going to get started. We're going to be doing the Meep Juice distribution system today. Um, and then we'll see how we're going from there. Now what I want to talk about right first of all is this. This is a super clock, um, a command block clock. Um, I don't know how many of you have heard of him. There's a, a guy called Traslander. He's a fairly well-known YouTuber and uh, you probably don't know this but his genius map making, map making series is what inspired me to get started making my own adventure map and, and let's playing the process and he's been very inspirational to me. Recently he started uploading again, and uh, he was, in one of his episodes, he was with a guy called Last Username, and Last Username was telling him about these clocks here. Now these clocks are amazing because, first of all, um, they pulse 20 times a second, which is faster than any other kind of redstone clock that I've ever heard of. In fact, I'm pretty sure it's 20 times a second, it's running as fast as anything possibly can in this, in this game. Uh, secondly... Uh, th by the way, the way it works is, it looks like it's doing nothing, but there's a, it set blocks air here with this one, so it's vanishing it, and at the same time, in the same tick, it's also setting that space to redstone, to a redstone block. So this is constantly being deleted and replaced, and that's enough to give an output signal. We've got these test for command blocks here, and they're constantly being powered. But the great thing about this is, because it's replacing and deleting this redstone block in the same game tick, it doesn't send any information to the client. So there's no lag. Um, last username was also talking about dust and torches and how much lag they cause. Um, this is because, uh, so this is why one of these clocks is something I don't really want to use anymore because you've got light updates from the torch and the repeater, uh, you've got particles coming out of the dust in the repeater and apparently the algorithm used to determine how much signal strength is in each piece of dust is very inefficient and it causes quite a lot of computation and lag. So my new policy is as little dust as possible really um, and going for more command blocks and things uh, to, it, to replace dust where I can. Uh, this is a new node system by the way, I don't think I explained this, I was looking into it, this is a three speed node system so if there's three players on the point it'll catch really, it'll be captured very fast. If there's two, it'll be medium, and if there's one, it'll be slower. Um, and the way it works is it detects how many players are on this point, one, two, or three, and then it re this command block here is spawning this grass block with this custom age, uh, similar to our last node, but these command blocks here actually destroy that command block. So if I do that, we now have a new command block there with a faster age, so you'll notice that this item despawns a little bit faster uh, and in fact if we power this one here this one here that's the fastest right there so vanishes faster than any of the others um, yeah so that's kind of a new node but the reason I'm not going to use this yet is because I found another bug Right, so we've got we've got the um, the droppers, and they have four shovels in each, right? And I found a really good way of clearing them faster. Um, you know, no wait time anymore. Uh, I'll talk about that maybe if I end up using this. But I found another bug. So to refill these when you reset the node, I've got hoppers here. And this thing over here, I'm just going to delete that a second. This thing here spawns new hoppers with four shovels in them. There's four shovels, yep. If I put this... If I put this dropper here, the items feed out of the hopper and vanish. They're gone. It's definitely pointing at that. It's pointing at the dropper. Let's do it again. Click. Four items. Nothing. It's gone. So there goes my plan. Uh, I need to kind of rethink that a little bit. So um, one of the things we're changing, we're changing some of those clocks over. Um, we've got this blue square here. This is the spawn chunks. Uh, as long as the server is running, these chunks are loaded. 
and we're going to be moving a lot of our redstone into this square. This is our new developer hub. And the reason for this is is dust uh, and updates. So we're over at Torbray's map now. Uh, you can see we've got a clock here which is creating lag and this dust is constantly updating and the particles from torches and redstone dust cause lag if they're in the player view range. So what we're going to do is we're going to move all of this redstone over to spawn uh, where it'll keep running because the spawn chunks are always loaded but um, they're out of the player view range which means that the the client, uh, so players, won't get any lag from, from the dust rising out of these rising out of the redstone wire. So that's a big move project, um, which I'm gonna, probably going to do off camera. Um, the other thing I need to fix uh, well, not, is Traslander is very good at what ifing. He's very good at going, what if somebody does this? You hear that hiss? That's a burning out torch. And what this can do is it happens occasionally. If somebody was to mess with this too long. That goes red and this stays green because of the burnout. So I've got to do a bit more what ifing. I'm sure there's plenty of uh, instances I haven't thought of, things, things that could happen that I haven't thought of. So I'm going to have to go through and basically try and break my map as I go um, to see how to fix things like that. Um, but today we're going to be working on the Meep Juice distribution system. So let's go over to spawn since that's where we're going to be doing all our redstone now and start working on this. Okay, so this is our one minute clock. Let me explain um, again what we're doing with this Meep Juice. So um, the idea is, and this was suggested by Diamond Creeper, and I said I'd try it out because I've been thinking about it, and it does sound like a pretty good idea. Thanks, Diamond Creeper, for that suggestion. Uh, this is a one-minute clock, and what we're going to do is um, we're going to, while a game is, is running, count everybody's player kill count, how many players they've killed. And at the end of the minute, we'll select a random player from all the people who haven't killed anybody, uh, and we will give them a Meep Juice based on their team colour. So if they're a dark team member, they'll get a dark meep juice. If they're a light team member, they'll get a light meep juice. Um, and then it'll reset everyone's kill count. So that way, we can make sure that players who are perhaps not doing so well, you know, they've, uh, they're have they not out the front, they're not killing people left, right and centre. They've There goes our one minute clock again, a little bit of a pulse. Um, we can make sure that they you know, they get a bit of a chance, because I'm, I'm assuming that if they aren't really killing anyone, they're probably not quite as good at the game, maybe. So, you know, uh, balances it out a little bit. Um, if nobody's killed anyone in that minute, then no one will get a potion until the next minute uh, when it resets, if that makes sense. Um, and you can't really cheat the system by, uh, unless you agree that only one person should not kill in one minute, um, which is, uh, I, I think, a little bit of a difficult variable to to balance, I think it's going to be fairly random who gets the meat juice. So we've got a one minute clock going here. Um, this item on top of the pressure plate is set to despawn after one minute rather than five. And when it does, this torch gives a quick pulse. Uh, this is the new um, uh, starting zone for map developers, by the way. Oh, there it clicked again. So, um, let's get going to the next bit. We need to track players' kills. So, we need to go scoreboard objectives, add, uh, player kills, play, oop, player kill count. That'll do. So, we've got a player kills uh, objective. Uh, I'm probably going to have to get another player on here to test this. Um, we can, we can smash each other a little bit and then we need to uh let's see when the pulse comes we need to check for players like something like this we need to um well hang on let me let me get some code for that meep juice potion one second Okay, so this is the this is the potion code for dark meep juice. 
So let's change this beginning bit here. Give to a random player um, with uh, a team of dark and a score player kills minimum of one that potion. Oh, minimum of zero. If they haven't killed anyone, they should get a potion. One random person. Right, I think that's correct. We're going to have to test this. Uh, and then the same for the light team. Oh, we saw it pulse there, so that would have that would have powered those. Okay, I think they're done. So, uh, scoreboard teams join light. Okay, so... Uh, scoreboard. I'm currently scoreboard objectives players. Uh, scoreboard. Oh, I got a meat juice. Great. I got a light meat juice because I'm a member of the light team. And if I do scoreboard teams join dark. Ooh dark then in one minute I should get a dark meat juice let's just wait here a second there we go dark meat juice delicious okay so that seems to be that's <laughs> kind of if you look at the size of this platform kind of smaller than I was expecting it to be um, I think potentially we should have one command block per team per map area um, because first of well we don't want people who aren't playing to get a potion even though they should be on the lobby team if they're not playing um, but if there's more than one game going I'm still not sure whether I want to be able to run more than one game at once or not but until I'm not sure I may as well try and accommodate for that uh, in which case, we may as well have it, otherwise only one player from one of the four games, matches being played will get a potion. So we can do that by um, going over here and entering a radius and a coordinate uh, centered around the map. So uh, if I just go get some coordinates for Torbray's map, got myself another dark meat juice there. I keep flying up here to get to the to the developer hub, but it's down here now. Okay, I've got my coordinates. Uh, if I paste these in here, that should cover that entire area, which means that in the next minute when this clock resets, I shouldn't get a meep juice because I'm out of range. Let's wait a second for that. Yep, no meep juice for us. Uh, let's wander over quickly to Torbury's area, hang out there a little bit, and we should randomly get given a potion while we're down here in the map. See all those name tags? We've been... We've got Porkman Kerr, Torb, Scott, Sparks, Crazyman47, there's Aerophyte somewhere. Uh, yeah, this, this map's still being developed quite nicely. Um, I've got to move all my command blocks from the last episode still. Uh, let's see. I've also done this thing here uh, by Torbray's request. We've got uh, the the lamp here is one higher than otherwise just so that the barricade isn't in the way because you couldn't have moved the barricade, Torbray, but you know, whatever. There's Arrow, our blacksmith. <laughs> oh, there we go. Dark Meat Juice, and Torbray's online. Hey, hey! Killed by Purple, Purple Sparks, then I teleport him back to me. Oh! Okay, well that's something I need to fix. Why 
Why am I not getting a potion? I'm still on a team, right? Oh, I'm not on a team! That's why. When I went through the teleporter, it um, sent me back to lobby team. Should get a potion now. There we go. Okay, well I... I think that that's working. I don't see why it wouldn't. I mean, it's three command blocks. If I've missed something, that's just stupid. I think we're good. Uh huh. So, it's set up to be just this map. That's fine. But we need to make sure that it resets once it's done. So, it's going to be... We've got four maps, so we need eight command blocks. Cracked stone brick. Look, I didn't see... So it's going to be these four slots here, right? One, two, three, four. And then after that, we can get ourselves a repeater. And then one more command block here. Scoreboard. Players set at all. Player kills. Zero. Should be right, right? Yeah, that's right. There we go. All set to zero. It works. Great. It's really windy outside today. I woke to torrential downpours today. That's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. I'm I'm quite pleased with that. Um, good idea, Diamond Creeper. Uh, I'm thinking that this clock could potentially freeze if the server's ever stopped, so I feel like I should have a command block over here which updates this clock. If I was to power this right now, what would happen? Let's do some what ifing. Nothing, because it's already powered by the by the grass block, so we can't have two clocks running, like two different items running at once there, which is good. So, I think we'd be fairly safe to put a uh, command block here. And then this is the positive x. So, if we do set block 1 blank blank Minecraft air like that, then we can spawn a redstone block here when the gate when people join the server oh it's negative x whoops minus one so because uh, if this clock ever freezes which it might then when somebody steps on these pressure plates up here it will spawn a redstone block right here and then vanish it again and that'll update the clock and make sure that it keeps going. I think that's good. That's good. Great. So I've noticed something big I've potentially overlooked here, which I was supposed to add and I've forgotten. If I just start the game a moment, I'm on the dark team at the moment. Um, I noticed this when I was killing Torbray, and I think what I've forgotten to do is set people's spawn points to their team start. So if I go ahead and die, yep, I end up back in the lobby. I fixed the lobby thing by the way. So I'm now, yeah, I fixed this lobby teleporter because uh, when I when I was clearing the spawn chunks out, I had to move this lobby over a little bit. Um, yeah, so it looks like I haven't actually set the spawn points for the players, which means when they die they end up back in the lobby, but actually we want to make sure that they end up back at their start point, so let's fix that. Okay, I think I've done it. So there's just a little extra command block here which sets the spawn point of anyone in this area to this point. I reckon that'll work. Let's try starting another game. And with any luck, that's a very important thing that I forgot fixed. 
let's see, let's um, ready both teams. Go, preparing castle warfare. We're not on a team, are we? Let's um, join the dark team. And try again. Alright, so here we are in the dark team. Wait for it. My spawn should already be set, but I just want to walk over here. Just for an extra bit of realism. Oh, that's good. That's good. We're here. This is definitely the dark spawn point. It's the dark wall around here. So, yeah, that's great. If you die, you just go back to your team start point. I think that's that's a fine way to do it. Outer. Yes, very well done, Torbray. Outer, indeed. Um, as usual, time has flown by um, while making this episode, so I think we're, we're good to go. I was talking to Torbray, and we reckon between us we can get this area done in the next two to three weeks, and then we will have an alpha test, and we will actually get some people we know on, and we're going to go have some fun and test the map out, bug check it and stuff like that. So just this area, just Torbray's area, to do some alpha testing to find find little kinks and bugs and issues um, to make sure that um, everything's cool. For instance, I just noticed today that um, for some random reason, the this one here doesn't work. I don't know why. So, yeah, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Next episode, we're probably going to be looking at... Mm, I've got an idea for fixing the Meep Juice, uh, sort of using Meep Juice's own design for his Meep Juice system and changing it a little bit, but I'm not sure about that. I need to move all this redstone around. Uh, we might go and do some fixing and stuff, or if you have any suggestions, things you think I ought to add or fix, let me know. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.